Precalculus Unit 2, Lesson 8, Solving Inequalities in One Variable. So we're going to look at both polynomial and rational function inequalities. We're going to use sign charts for them, similar to what we did with quadratics. A polynomial inequality is when we have a polynomial function on one side, some inequality sign, and then zero. To solve that, we're going to factor f of x into the product of its linear factors and irreducible quadratics, so we don't need the imaginary zeros. We will then find the real zeros of x of x. We'll make a sign chart by putting the real zeros on the number line, finding the sign in each one of those sections, and then choosing which one matches the inequality that we're looking for. So it's very similar to what we did with quadratics, just that we'll have more than two zeros now. So in this quartic equation, if we factor that into x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 3, this part we know is irreducible because this is a plus, but this factors into x minus 2 and x plus 2. So it will also only have two real zeros. So I put two real zeros, but there are three parts with signs. If I put in, say, a minus 3, this is negative, this is negative, this is positive. So I have a negative, negative, and a positive. The overall sign is a positive. If I put 0 in here, this is negative, this is positive, this is positive. The overall sign of that is negative. If I put in here 3, this is positive, positive, positive. Po 3 positives gives you a positive. You want where it's less than 0, meaning negative, less than or equal to 0, which means the places where it is 0 or n below that or negative. So that's all the region in between there. And the solution would be between minus 2 and 2. So for this one, it's not one that we can get by grouping, so we would have to use our graphing calculator for that. The possible rational roots are 1 and 3, and then 1 half and 3 halves. Graphing calculators suggest 1 and 3, so if you do that, you can confirm that those are zeros. And then the one that's left is 2x plus 1. So we want where this is bigger than 0. Again, that has zeros of minus 1 half, 1, and 3. We have to pick one from each section. If you look at the overall signs, this will be negative, positive, negative, positive. Again, let's just do one of them. Let's suppose I put negative 1, which is here. This is negative. This is negative. This is negative. Three negatives will give me a negative. And now these zeros are not included, so we went where it's strictly bigger than zero. So I put open circles at the zeros. Here I put closed circles because there was an equal. And then I want where it is bigger than zero, meaning positive. So I connected the areas that were positive, and then these are open. So the endpoints are not included, minus one half and one, and then free it from three to infinity. One thing that we know is that polynomials change sign only at real zeros of odd multiplicity, and there's no sign changes at even multiplicity, so you can use that to make sure that you've done your sign charts right. At the ends, positive or negative can also be used from the end behavior, so you can use that to help you. Again, here we would know that this would have to be going up on the right and down on the left, so on the right side it should be positive, and the left it should be negative. When the only factors are irreducible quadratics, meaning we only have imaginary roots, that means everything is either above or below, so the only things that can be possible is the solution set or the empty set, the whole real number line, a single number, or everything except that single number. A sign chart will give you all the solutions to possible polynomial inequalities at one time. You would simply choose different intervals, meaning suppose I want here where it's less than zero, then I would just leave out these two points. Suppose I want bigger than zero, well then I would take where it was positive instead. So even though we've done here for one inequality, we could re really replace it with any of those and come up with the solution at the same time. Now for rational inequalities, again, we have one polynomial over another one, and we have that ratio. It can be either positive, negative, zero, or it can be undefined. The sign can change at the zeros or at the undefined points. So the places where there are asymptotes can also be things of sign change, as we saw from their graphs. So we need not only the real zeros of the numerator, but we also need the points of discontinuity in the denominator. Now the ones in the denominator cannot be solutions, even if they're equals, but the ones in the numerator can. So you want to make sure that you put either an open or a close, depending on what you have. So if we factor this, we want where it's less than or equal to zero. This one's in the numerator, that's a possibility because that would make that equal to zero. So I'm going to put a closed circle there because the equal is included here. 
these two are not in the domain, so I want to make sure I exclude them. Make sure that you put open circles for those. Then you're going to do a sign chart. You're going to put all of these numbers. Of course, make sure you put them in the right order, minus 4, minus 3, and 5. It doesn't matter if they're the correct distance apart. It's simply a way of splitting the interval up into the appropriate sections. Then if you put minus 5 here, this will be negative, this will be negative, this will be negative. Three negatives is negative. If you put in here like negative 3.5, this will be negative, this will be negative, this will be positive. Overall sign is positive. If you put in here, 0 is in there, so this will be positive, negative, positive. Overall sign negative. If you put here like 6, this will be positive, positive, positive. The overall sign will be positive. We want where it's less than 0 or negative. So I'm going to shade the parts where it's negative. This one goes up from minus infinity to minus 4, where the minus 4 is not included. And then it goes from minus 3 to 5. The minus 3 is included, but the 5 is not. So I'm going to include the minus 3 and not the 5. These same ideas can be used for sign charts for other types of inequalities. You just have to make sure you're taking the domain of that. So you can use it for absolute value. You can use it for square root. So here I have a square root function. We know that underneath each one of these radical signs, we need those things to be bigger than or bigger than or equal to zero, depending on whether it's the numerator or the denominator. So this is in the numerator. We need it bigger than or equal to zero. This one's in the denominator. We need it strictly bigger than zero. So first, if you do this, the x squared minus 4 is bigger than zero. You would need the absolute value of x bigger than 2 if you solve that. So x has to be less than minus 2 or bigger than 2. And 2x minus 5 is x is bigger than or equal to 2.5. These two things together mean that the domain has to be from 2.5 to infinity because I need both this and this true, and this is the only region which satisfies both of those. So now when I do my sign chart, I'm only going to look at 2.5. I'm not going to look at anything less than that, so I put 2.5 on my number line, but I'm basically going to ignore everything else. So I don't even need these zeros of minus 2 and 2 because they're over here in the section where there's not the domain. So even though they are things that would make the denominator 0, they're not important because they're not in the domain of the function. The only other one I need is this 4, which is in the numerator. So I put that 4. Then again, I pick something. If you put 3 here, this would be negative. This would be positive. This would be positive. That would be a negative. If you put something here like 5, this will be positive, positive, positive. So the over sign will be positive. And now, again, to show you that you can do any inequality, we can solve all of those with one sign chart. If we want where it's bigger than or equal to 0, the fork would be included. The 2.5 would be included. And then we want where it's positive, so that would be everything here. We would include this point. We would include from 4 to infinity. If we want where it's less than 0, we would not include the 2.5 because that's where it equals 0. We would not include the 4. We would include everything else in between. For this one, we want where it's less than or equal to 0. So now it's this, but where it's also equal. So now we would add both of those points in, and we would include the 2.5 and the 4.